This is gonna play the park. Setting to turn volume a little bit down. Oh wait, no. Turn to me. Yo. Why is it so loud? Okay, um, the park is a narrow extension, best played in the dark room wearing headphones. Okay, Ca um, this is a warning. Everyone, this is a warning. Okay, right? What you see, what you saw in front of you was a warning. Please. This is a new game on the channel. It's not like a new, new game. It's kind of an old game. I just haven't gotten around to play it at all. I found it um, a couple days ago. I said, oh, this is, looks like a really good game. So I got it. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. Callum, I don't trust you. You don't leave your kids in the car alone. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park for shutdown. Oh, trust it. Let's exit interact. Okay. Okay, I can't go that way. What? Hey, Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath. Think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. How did he get in? Callum, I told you to wait in the car. This way. Wait up there for mommy, Callum. This way, mommy. Callum, I told you to wait in the car. Over here. There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employees, the park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. Wait up there for mommy, Callum. Come on, mommy. Wait for mommy, Callum. Over here. Callum, where are you going? Catch me, mommy. Callum. Callum, where are you going? Over here. Wait for mommy, Callum. You little shit. Um. No, thank you. I'd, I'd like to leave. Can I please leave? 
Oh God. The park. What happened here? Um, I don't really care what happened. Wait, Callum. Come on. I'm going there. There's someone up there. There's someone up there. I think I... Oh, um... Karen Kelly is a... Um... I think I was the only YouTuber to see that. Um, I don't like this. Sorry if I like be quiet all of a sudden. Um, if like they talk. Come out, sweetie. Come on this way. Examine. I think this belongs to Calum. Did I take it? Chad the chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. Chad the chipmunk worst in class. Chad couldn't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Jeez. That's a really nice thing to say. Callum, stay where you are. What was that bench? Over here. Handwritten note. I wonder what this is. Okay, but I'm not, I, I can't really see it because it's not really zoomed in. Um. I don't like that boy anyone. Callum, stay where you are. Screw Callum. Wait, is he on a boat? Let me in. Come on, mommy. Yeah, I would if I could. But the freaking goose won't let me in. Callum, come back here right now. Freaking minute. Okay, there we go. This is boring. <laughs> to say, Chad the chipmunk will die in a dead end job. This seems nice. I like this place. I go here in real life. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband. We will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. Uh. No, my wife. I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. Uh, so I'm part of the story. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. 
clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Then that her story goes. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. No, her story at all goes. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its what? windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. <laughs> what? <laughs> Little mouse, who is nibbling at my house? An Me. old woman emerged from the house, no. sniffing the air and Sn peering around with cloudy eyes. That's oh, weird. you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back. For the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> There's some dumb kids. Once inside the house, the old woman changed. She stuffed Hansel into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. That's messed up. Time passed, and the witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool, the old witch said. The opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove, and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled and the witch was cooked. That's not how a story goes at all. That's way and more then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. Something was seriously wrong. Can't really tell what it was. Hey, Yaki. Hey.
I like you. You're cool. What kind of bird are you? Are you a goose? Nah, you're a duck. You're, you're a ducky. Let's see the boat. Can I leave? Not again. I got a trophy. Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. What? That's so Those weird. poor children. The whole world against them. The forest, the birds, the old witch, even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Callum! Oh, what? This is the way to the exit. This way. This is the way to glory. I don't know, but I've never heard the story of Hansel and Gretel getting killing a witch. I I don't know if it, if you guys ever heard that, but that's kind of messed up. Well, not kind of. It is messed up. Another accident. This place. Cool. Hey, Teddy Bear. Let me close this door. Okay, bye. I didn't do it. Body. Oh, yay! Carnival ride. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head, it make me dizzy. Oh, God damn it. I can't get on while it's moving. Okay, there we go. This one. Oh my god. Yay! 
Wait, how did... I'm bored. This is fun. Hey, guy. Screen shaking. <coughs> oh, my leg. Oh, let me out. What is on the first wheel? Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. Whip. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. Balling thing, and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Where are you? That was deep. What? Did he say let's play, Mommy? Come, I don't want to play. The. Oh, bumper Constant cars. crashes in 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. I uh, get it. No, I don't. Duh. That me? No, it can't be. I'm on my. I want to go on a roller coaster. I'm gonna end it like a hug time. Don't be afraid. Mommy is coming, Callum. Oh, come on, this sucks. Mommy is coming, Callum. Callum, tell Mommy where you are. Callum, where did you go? Where are you? Callum! Stay where you are. Cool. Callum, where did 
wanted to go. Boom. He went. Where in. are you, Callum? Something is going right. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. I want to go in this. Why is there no door? <sighs> Mysterious man, I know you're there. Can you make it go really fast? People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Calm was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Oh, sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. I'm sorry for that. Ooh, this is getting a bit cold. Ooh, it's cold. The serious man there? Yep. Next time it saves, it's going to be the end of the episode. Okay. I hope you guys... I hope you guys had a good time. I sure did. This is going to be part one. I might do another one today. I don't know. But I hope you guys had a good time. And... Yeah. So, peace out.